Hello and welcome. I'm Patrick Curtis, your host and chief monkey, and this is the Wall Street Oasis podcast. Join me as I talk to some of the community's most successful and inspirational members to gain valuable insight into different career paths and life in general. Let's get to it. In this episode, member Lane Staley, one of the most giving members in all of WSO's history, shares his inspiring path as an engineering student during the Great Recession in 2008, all the way to a post-MBA associate seat in private equity, and now to the, as a vice president at a merchant bank in the Northwest. He shares how he first broke into consulting out of undergrad during a very tough recruiting environment, his jump to investment banking, and how he was laughed out of the room by a private equity partner during an info session when he told him that his eventual goal was private equity. Learn how he managed to prove that par- partner wrong with some simple legwork. Having lived in a lot of different regions and tasted a lot of different industries in his short career, I hope this guest gives you a nice taste of the nuances of each. Enjoy. Okay, Lane Staley, thank you so much for joining the Wall Street Voices podcast. Just real quick before we get started. I want to say that you are one of my favorite members of all time on Wall Street Oasis, so thank you for taking the time to join me here. Much appreciated. Happy to be here. Um, so anyways, um, it'd be great if you could give the listeners a quick summary of your background. Yeah, so I guess I'll start back in college. Um, so I went to semi-target. Uh, I was an engineer. I was a varsity athlete, um, and I was somebody that grew up totally away from, you know, anything having to do with the world that Wall Street Oasis, you know, showed us about. So I didn't know what consulting was. I didn't know what investment making was or private equity. So so I was very much looking at that from the outside in. Um, and so I uh, I graduated from college in the, in the middle of the great financial crisis. Um, and finding a job was hard. Um, and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure I wanted to be an engineer. Um, and I found a job with a small, it was a boutique consulting firm that really ended up being like uh, Bain's private equity group. I mean, most of what we did was, you know, two to four week, really quick sprint um, due diligence projects for um, for buyers, for private equity firms looking to buy companies. Mm-hmm. And what type? And so I did that. Sorry, sorry what, what types of companies specific, like were you doing like industry deep dives or what type of like consulting was it? No, very... Uh, very industry agnostic. Okay. So, um, you know, somebody would come to us with, you know, we're, we're looking at buying, uh, you know, a company that makes sensors, you know, it's a, mm-hmm. um, you know, just a, a pure manufacturing company, Got or it. we're looking at a professional services company, or we're looking at uh, an apple orchard or <laughs> really, <laughs> really wide stuff. Okay. So, and that's, I mean, that's part of what made it fun for me was, I mean, I, I didn't know anything about businesses, really. I mean, I'd never taken a finance class. Um, I, I wasn't I wasn't a business major at all. So you did and that? So that was, so it was a pretty sharp learning curve. Cool. So you did that for three years? Did and... that. Um, happened to be, um, you know, I was friends with somebody who worked for an investment banking firm down the street. Um, and they were kind of looking for an interesting role. They were looking to add someone that was, um, you know, kind of had more of a, a strategy consulting background uh, mm-hmm. instead of you know, somebody with the, the typical finance background from straight out of straight out of undergrad. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was sort of a, an experienced hire into IB, but I, I went through the, you know, the the typical two year, you know, investment banking analyst um, program. Yeah, engagement, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, trying to figure out how to. Boot camp, uh, boot camp, or it. <laughs> it is, it's totally a boot camp. Um, <laughs> and then, so did that. yep. And then, uh, next up was business school. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and really, that was you know, I you know, hence the um, the username Lane Staley. I grew up in Seattle, and I wasn't sure that I wanted to spend uh, the bulk of my career in the Pacific Northwest, so mm-hmm. I wanted to go to business school to sort of broaden my um you know, my career opportunities to other parts of the world. Um, and so out of that, that ended up working for me. I got a, a job with a very niche private equity firm in the Southeastern United States. Um, and I mean, again, talk about a learning curve. Um, 
it was a it was a cool way to to put together what I'd learned both in consulting and banking. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I mean, just a um, and I the work was just awesome. I mean, being on the the buy side of the table was uh, really intellectually engaging. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after doing that for a couple of years, I got a uh, I got a chance to to come back to the Western U.S and work for what I'll call a merchant bank. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, we can spend a little bit of time talking about exactly what that is, but, but that's my role now. So I'm, I'm not, uh, not right. a partner, but on a partner track. And, you know, hopefully in the next couple of years, we'll be able to, to get to that point. Great. So lots to unpack there. Let's start back all the way in college. So you were mm-hmm. in college, you're getting an engineering degree. What kind of, you know, as I assume you graduated in 2008 or was it nine? Uh, 2008. 2008. Yeah. So 2008 is coming. The, the whole world's falling apart and financial crisis. And you're struggling to get a job. Did you have any internships? Did you even think of consulting? Were you looking for engineering jobs? You know, your junior year, any internships? What, what, was, what did your resume look like kind of coming into recruiting? or in your, I assume you didn't have anything coming into your senior year uh, lined up. Tell yeah, me, tell me was, what that was uh, like. So. I'd found jobs uh, in in summers uh, before uh, before my senior year, but all of them were engineering. Mm. They were engineering internships in in labs, or I did research one summer for a university professor. Um, very very much an academic track. So um, how- really, what uh, what you know, I guess, changed me to a, a different path was um, I did research my my senior year. For a professor at, at my university, mm-hmm. um, I was I was mostly done with my course requirements, and so my so I, I was I was an athlete, and so I was basically playing my sport and and doing research. Fun. And the uh, <laughs> the well the the sport part was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, the research in the lab part was really unfulfilling. Okay. And so I kind of had a you know open my eyes moment of like shoot you know, but that was your senior year that was to... your senior year it's like yeah. oh man it's late it's my senior year yeah. i've uh you know tried to organize my entire education around doing this and you know, i don't think this is something i want to do man i think that happens to so many people i think people you know you go down a path you you do something maybe because you can do it and then you realize wait a second i don't want to be doing this the rest of my life um yeah, I think it's it's tough as a as a twenty year old, nineteen year old, twenty year old to kind of be making those decisions, especially now with accelerated recruiting. You're making those decisions so early. Like, do you really know you want to be an investment banker at nineteen, eighteen? No, probably not. But you better start making the steps you need to make um, to increase your odds. So, okay, tell me a little bit about yeah. you. You come to this epiphany. You're in the lab. You're like, this yeah. is miserable. Um, what's your next step? What do you well, start doing? So one other quick plug uh, on on that note. That's that's why I think. Uh, you know, places like Wall Street Oasis are so valuable, and why it, uh, I'm more than happy to spend time, you know, trying to give back to the to this community because, you know, when I was in college, I was not good at information gathering or advocating for myself. Mm. Um, you know, I had this picture in my mind of what this role was going to look like, but I didn't really test that thesis that much. Um, you know, I I continued to kind of have that in my brain. Was it, had, was, it like, that, was it romanticized? Was it romanticized? Like, was it romanticized? Like, yeah, entirely. Yeah. yeah, like I'm going to be in the lab discovering these <laughs> cures to cancer or something like. Was it something like that, or was it? Was it? Why? Why do you think you had that romanticized view? Was it professors that kind of put that in your head, or? Um, I, I movies, think Hollywood. The, um, the the coursework itself, mm-hmm. I was good at. Got it. And everyone likes to be good at stuff. Right. Um, and so I, I sort of had the belief that, well, you know, if I'm good at the coursework and the preparation, well, then the real deal is going to be like this. I'm going to be good at that, too. Right. And and, you know, there's there's some carryover from school to the real world, but it's tenuous at best. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I found that it was the role was something different than what I'd created in my head. Got it. OK. So. Uh, so anyways, you know, places where people can go to actually kind of get a reality check and, and figure out, well, people who are doing this, what's this actually like is, mm-hmm. I mean, that's one of the, the greatest gifts you can give someone. Yeah, I feel like no matter um, how much you tell people 
you're going to be working 80 to 100 hours a week until you experience it. It's, it's another thing entirely. I knew that. I had been told that kind of going in. And then when you're there at 5 p.m. after working 70 hours already that week and the weekend's coming up and you get called <laughs> called back in and you get like you have to be there all weekend and you're there all friday night after you had plans you have to cancel it's it's another thing entirely um I that's remember, true i mean I, you can explain to somebody all day long what it's like to be punched in the face it doesn't matter yeah dude like they I, gotta be punched in they the gotta face. be punched in the face <laughs> it's exactly right i mean i remember literally my first year i remember my vp coming over at like 6 p.m on a friday and i was exhausted and I remember him being like, hey, we got to turn this thing to tonight. It was like a fire drill for, for Monday. And I remember just sitting there like I hadn't eaten, I think, in too long. I remember like I was sh- my hands were shaking. And I remember being like almost to a break, almost like a breakdown. Um, and I, didn't, I haven't shared this to anybody. I just It just came to me just talking about this. And man, it's one of those things like, like you said, like you think you're so tough. <laughs> <laughs> until you get in and you have to experience the sleep deprivation and the exhaustion and then the mm-hmm. the constant push and pull. So we try to give that perspective on Wall Street Oasis. We try to feature that. We try to talk about the hours a lot. We try to talk about the lifestyle to make sure people go, in, go in with eyes wide open. But but I think kids are going to want to go down the path they want to go go down. Um, it's still I still think it's a great career um, and a great kind of mm-hmm. – Jumping off point, but anyways, I'm a tangent. So you're so you're here. You're you're kind of very late to the game in a financial crisis. You're about to graduate into the worst economy we've seen since the Great Depression. And mm-hmm. um, are you nervous? Are you scared? Are you confident? Are you overly confident like a lot of college kids? <laughs> so um, I was not, um, and and I think that's part of what. Um, you know, being an engineer mm-hmm. teaches you what it's like to be bad at things. Mm. Um, I mean, engineering courses are not easy. Very Everyone true. has a test or a class that just, you know, turns them over and puts them in the ground. <laughs> um, and, and a little bit the same with, uh, with athletics. I mean, I, I was used to getting beat up both physically and mentally. Yeah. And so uh, it wasn't fun at the time, but I, that was pretty good preparation for, you know, trying to navigate a career of, you know, some pretty significant obstacles, this one being one of them. Yeah, for sure. And so, I mean, I really, I really kind of broadened out and, and thought, you know, I tried to really for the first time go out to any sort of network um, and use the career services at my university and try and figure out, hey, people with a, a technical background who, you know, are at least academically smart, Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what, what can they do? Like, what, what can they find to do in the world? And were they helpful? Said, well, have you, well, I mean, just the, the kernel of, well, have you ever thought about management consulting or strategy consulting? You know, what, you know, what about that? Yeah. And, and I said, well, I, I don't have any idea what that is. You know, tell me more. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought of it as, and it was explained to me as, uh, this is going to be like going to grad school. But I mean, it's a, it's like an accelerated business education. Yep. And I thought, shoot, well, that's perfect. I mean, that's, that's what I should be doing. Um, had there been I, interest I in know. business before? Like, did you have interest in business? Like you know, your family or anything um, like that? Was anybody in finance or, or consulting? So my, uh, my dad, um, had been in a, um, you know, a finance career. Okay. Um, and so he had some exposure there, but, um, but he was, so he was not one to to steer his kids toward anything. Good for him. Um, you know, more yeah, more wanted us to to find out what we were interested and good at. And cool. Um, I mean, you could argue that maybe it would have been better if I'd known a little bit more <laughs> sooner. But uh, but you know, I mean, he's I, letting I he's letting you fall on your face and fall and find your way. It's not a bad thing. It's gonna make for pretty a, much good yeah. long term success for your for yourself. So. Cool. So, you, um, you, so who so who told you that, man? Who, who, but yeah. So, who dropped that that Colonel Wisdom? Was it career consultant? It was it somebody in career office there? Uh, yeah, it was someone at my university's career center. That's great. And so then, I assume that's when you came across Wall Street Oasis, or soon thereafter, maybe once you were at the consultant, um, <laughs> or no? So I, yeah, I came across Wall Street Oasis uh, when I was a consultant. Got it. Okay. Um, and I was trying to figure out because I mean, consulting is. I mean, it's different than banking is. I think the biggest difference for me 
mm-hmm. was that consulting every project has a scope. Mm-hmm. Um, it has it has definitions of roles. It has a defined beginning and end. Um, and I mean, there can be a lot of chaos within that scope, but at least at the firm that I was at, I mean, you're on one project at a time. Right. So there's one deliverable that you're, I mean, really churning toward. And, and there's not really a staffer role. Right. Um, I mean, there's a staffer to figure out, you know, what does utilization look like and who's going to be on what engagement. But, um, but there's not the same, you know, you're trying to juggle um, requests from, you know, four different groups that they don't care how busy you are. I mean, right. They just, they need their stuff done and they need you to do it. Um, so sorry, let's and, going back. I interrupted you. I jumped you forward. It, you're, so you kind of had this idea of, okay, management consulting, you started, like you said, email blitzing, mm-hmm. email blitzing. Tell me about yeah. that. And tell me about like, what was your hit rate? Were these cold emails? Were you using LinkedIn? All that good stuff. Uh, as cold as could be. <laughs> I mean, um, I probably like I, I sent out cover letters and resumes. I used you know online um, applications. Uh, I reached out to partners. Um, I I think I remember um, you know reaching out to uh, somebody at McKinsey and saying how excited I was to talk to somebody at Bain. And I mean like any <laughs> any any mistake that you can make. I mean I probably made it. I love it. I love it. You're like automatically blacklisted from McKinsey. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they didn't email back. Uh, surprising. I mean, I <laughs> no. um, tell me how many. So you said email blitzing. Where you send? Did you send out like a couple hundred, and did you get like five responses back? What would you say that the response rate back was? And did you get information mm, I sessions? Sent out. I probably sent out a couple of dozen. Okay, um, so, so about... I mean, double digits, not triple digits. Okay, and did you get a couple bytes from that? Did you get any info sessions from it? Yeah, probably. Um, and maybe, you know, high single digits of bytes and then two, three interviews that came out of that. That's pretty good. Your your cold email must have been pretty solid. Or I guess maybe they liked your technical background. That's interesting. I mean, I, I think it was more, uh, look, I had uh, I had good grades from a pretty good school yep. in, a, in a difficult degree. Yep. And I was an athlete. Yeah. And, I mean, that's, you know, just as a, as a resume to send people. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a... You know, you may meet me and go, well, geez, that was a waste of time. But, but what's the, from, at least from a but, resume, I mean, that's, that's a pretty solid start. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how you would, um, you know, humble brag in the, in the initial cold email. Did you, did you list all those mm-hmm. things out? But like, hey, I'm an athlete over at this school, um, we, you know, with the engineering major, but I've, you know, um, I'm more interested in consulting now. Is that kind of how you would pivot it or, or coach it? Or, or was it really short and to the point? Like, I just want to talk about you. Do you remember? So do you I remember? actually, I went the other direction. Uh, I made them way too long. Got uh, it. Like I basically wrote a personalized cover letter uh, in each email. Um, and that was really before I knew how busy people were. And there were probably a bunch of people that looked at this missive and said, well, I, I don't have time for that. Yeah. Um, but to but be honest, I it sounds like it worked. I got, it worked. What's that? It sounds like it worked though. So you probably put in way too much time for each one of these. It sounds like, or like you, you spent a lot of time because it was interesting to me when you said you email blitz and it was only a, a few dozen, like you only sent 30 emails. Mm-hmm. Like that's not a lot <laughs> nowadays. It's not, it's just not. Um, but the fact that it's you true. got, the fact that you got three interviews out of that, not even three contacts, but three interviews is, or a couple interviews is actually mm-hmm. really impressive, especially back then in 2008. So, Okay. And those took me hours. I mean, that's probably the, I remember it as being a blitz because, uh, because I spent so much time on it. On each one. Um, and, and it was because I spent so much time on each one and I could probably call them up. And I mean, there's probably a commonality of structure, but they were basically rewritten every time. And why that were you? a huge caveat. I would not advise this. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, how, what, were you pers- <laughs> what were you personalizing besides the firm name? I mean, did you know enough? about these people or at the firm? Were you like trying to like write about their firm and make it all very specific or write about them somehow? Um, Try to make it about their work. So, so my basic, uh, my basic outreach was, look, uh, I think I'm a pretty bright guy. I like to solve problems. I'm sort of indifferent to the types of problems they are. Um, and, and most of these firms have a whole bunch of case studies on their website. Oh. And so, I'd pick out the case studies and say, hey, this one looks really cool. Here, here's 
why. Or, you know, this one would have been really interesting to me. Here's why. Like, here's some part of my experience or background that, that I think would, would have been useful or interesting here. And mm. I was probably wrong a lot. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so you end up somehow getting three interviews. Tell me about that interview. Was it a, a traditional case interview? Was it more just fit? Um, a blend. I mean, they were yeah. they were the you know same case interviews that uh, uh, that you'd read about in what is it point in case or yeah, case in point yeah any materials yep. case in point yeah yeah and um, and you know sort of similar to the rest of my background um, I didn't know how to case I mean I'd spent some time you know understanding the uh, the you know some of the basic rules so to speak mm -hmm. uh, but but I I didn't really have an appreciation for you know what they were looking for, yeah. And so that that sort of let me be a little bit more unapologetically myself. Yeah. Um, and I just like, well, I'm gonna think through this the way I know how to think through it. So you were the to, you were the uh, uber yeah. genuine case interview. <laughs> you yeah, were the yeah, you absolutely. were the you were the truly intellectual, not prepped, um, really truly working it out, not pretending like you're working it out in your head, and knowing the answer. Or, entirely yeah which may maybe was and endearing so that to some was people funny, <laughs> kind of going back yeah uh, especially when i was in business school and yeah. um you know learning about how people were trying to case and and what that whole process looked like i was like oh man like i didn't do any of this i did this totally wrong to be honest though like if you have the intellectual horsepower to handle it and you're logical and they can see you thinking through things it's almost more in my opinion, it's almost more attractive as an employer thinking, oh, I can definitely coach this person. Like anybody, anybody can be taught how to do a case interview and how to structure things, but it's hard to, mm -hmm. to get that raw intellectual horsepower and that drive and that curiosity. So it sounds like at least one went really well because you got an offer, right? And was this, how, how late was this in the game? How, when were you graduated? Did you graduate without a job or what was, what was the timing? Yeah, so this was like, uh august maybe so after you graduated, graduated in may got it so yeah you were unemployed for a few months mm -hmm. tell me about that did you have to move you home know, where did you move home were you nervous were you freaking out um, or were you i was incredibly nervous um i was freaking out um i did move home mm -hmm. um you know all all of those things were you know very much on my mind you know and this was this was a time i, I find it difficult, especially with the, the analysts at our firm now, to, to try and help them understand just what was going on in the world in 2008, 2009. Yeah. Um, like, we, we were worried that uh, there would be no jobs anymore for anybody. Yeah. Um, a ton of my friends were, uh, they were getting, uh, you know, they had offers and then they were getting delayed for a year. Rescinded. Or people were reneging on offers. Yeah. I mean, it was just a total mess. Yeah, I remember a guy I roomed with down in Argentina when I got my I finished my MBA even in 2010. He had received an offer from a you know big law big prestigious law firm, and they were paying their associates for a year, like a lower stipend, just to go away for a year. <laughs> and just uh here's fifty thousand dollars you know don't come work yet um that type of thing and he was loving it because he's like hey this is like a vacation <laughs> um before he has to go to the real world so yeah it was it was a scary time even even 2009 you know 2002 it, it took a long time to kind of dig dig uh mm -hmm. dig out of that but so um this was but it was still only three months out of school right so this was the you, you mm -hmm. ended up landing a job and tell me about that so uh, I was I was ecstatic uh, just to have a role anywhere somewhere you know some somewhere that would pay me and be able to pay my rent. Yep. Um, and so then you know anything beyond that I was like you know how is this you know what's the prestige of the firm or how is this setting me up for you know some other career trajectory? Um, I mean I I wasn't even aware that existed. Right. Um, so I was just kind of focused on going in and, and doing a good job. And uh, I did not do a good job for at least like the first six months. How do you uh, know that? I was, um, I, I mean, just my observations of, you know, how am I, um, you know, what am I able to take off other people's plates? You know, how am I being useful as, uh, as a team member? 
because uh, I mean, there was so much that I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, there was, I mean, somebody was, we were trying to uh, uh, do just a little piece of analysis on, um, uh, I forget what the context was. It was some company that was um, trying to understand something about their growth. Okay. And uh, and I asked one of the, um, the, so we were analysts. And then the next row up, uh, the next roll up was uh, was associates. And I yeah. asked one of the associates, I was like, "Hey, what's what's this Y O Y?" And he's like, and he just looks at me he's like, "It's year over year." And I was like, "So what does that mean?" <laughs> and he just, I'm I'm sure he was like, I mean, just totally dejected of like, I cannot believe uh, I got somebody who is this incapable he's probably like go google it dude <laughs> yeah i mean i just i, I don't know like I'm, i've never seen any of this before that's funny so i mean i had i had a hole to crawl out of i mean it was uh it was a, a struggle to get to a point where where i felt like i was a, a net contributor instead yeah. of a net cost to a project but i mean i got there yeah and so tell me how that transition felt like you started actually you knew what year over year meant I assume soon after that conversation <laughs> and then tell me about, uh, it took one or two times. Yeah. And then did you feel like you started, um, getting better developing the skill sets? Like, was it PowerPoint? You started getting better in that. Was it Excel? What kind of skill sets were you developing? Was it just the lingo that you needed to work on? Um, a lot of terminology, mm-hmm. uh, definitely some PowerPoint skill sets. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I mean, just little things, and little things internally, like understanding, you know, if you're working for a certain partner, you know, what are they looking for? What are their, you know, hot button things either on uh, on design or preparation or what they want to see when you go into a meeting right. or I mean, just kind of learning the rules of the game. But but I remember a meeting where I was like six months in mm-hmm. where I presented a, a bunch of slides that, you know, here's it's, you know, some tiny little piece of a of a larger project. And uh, and the the partner on the project looked through me and was like, huh, okay, yeah, good, and you know, on to the next thing. But but not to have all my work just you know ripped apart and flooded in red ink was like a huge step forward. <laughs> it was like him saying good was like uh, you you were like doing a victory lap in your head. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, maybe more than once. I mean, yeah, but it was like, uh, hey, this this actually. I was able to do something that helps the team and it's like helping move the project forward. This is great. That's right. So tell me a little bit about how, the progression there. Cause you were there for quite a while. And then when did you kind of discover the whole world of investment banking and what made you interested in it? So, um, a lot of the work that we did was, um, was market facing. And what I mean by that is that, you know, a, um, a private equity firm would ask us to to help them understand some context for a deal that they were interested in, and specifically, you know, uh, understanding how like a, com- a company's customers thought about their value proposition, or how uh, other things going on, like more macro trends surrounding a, a business, you know, would impact what would happen to a um, a company in the next, you know, two, three, four years. Okay. Um, so it was a lot of this, like understanding the environment that a company plays in, mm-hmm. but very little analysis of the business itself. You know, what's what's the machine? How does it work? How does it how does it take you know its its assets and its uh, you know day to day processes and create cash flow from it? Yep. Um, and I was like, man, I mean, the the stuff that the private equity guys are doing, I mean, that that seems really interesting. Um, and I feel like I have this big chunk that's missing. I feel like I can do half of it. Mm-hmm. So how do I how do I get the other half? Like how do I have a, how do I get a better understanding of um, you know how the how the company actually works? And so so I, I tried to figure out two directions on that. Uh, one was you know, maybe doing a, an investment banking analyst stint, mm-hmm. um, and one was you know could I do like a um, uh, a rotational development program, like a leadership program at a Fortune 500 company. Like an FLDP. Like yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, and, and honestly, I was, I was kind of, I mean, I only knew a little bit about both and I was kind of indifferent as to which route I took. I just, I knew I needed, you know, one or the other. Um, you wanted more far, so, hard finance skills and that tends to be the, the downside of going into consulting is when they want to go to private mm -hmm. equity or something else, they don't have those hard financial modeling skills. They don't have the deal experience on, on that side of the transaction experience, which is what a lot of PE firms look for. So yeah, continue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, so I was basically about to get started. It had, you know, I'd cleared. Um, it was January. You know, we cleared bonus season. I was trying to figure out, okay, is, is this the time to make a move and and figure out something something new? Mm -hmm. um, and I was basically about to start a similar outreach campaign um, to what I had done when I was leaving undergrad. Um, and and I ran into a friend of mine that. Um, that was working at a at a boutique investment bank mm -hmm. in the same city, you know, basically a, a block block or two away from from my consulting firm. Okay. And uh, and I, we were talking about you know what it was what it was we were doing and uh, and and he had said that they were uh, they were basically looking they were sort of tired of um, the continuous stream of analysts that had a um, you know, maybe a finance and accounting background, or maybe an economics background from from undergrad, mm -hmm. but didn't have a lot of the PowerPoint skills, didn't have a lot of the market context skills, mm -hmm. um, and so they're trying to figure out if it made sense to to see if another background would work. And I mean, some private equity firms have done this. I mean, some private equity yep. firms have a have a stated interest for for management consulting backgrounds instead of banking. And I mean, it's, it, you're just choosing what it is you're teaching people. Yep, exactly. Because uh, nobody has the full complement. Yeah, or it's very um, rare. <laughs> and so, yeah. Yep. And so I said, well, I, this sounds interesting. I mean, mm -hmm. I could, I could be interested in this. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so that was it. That was my search. It was. Uh, I went in for a couple of interviews and uh, and got a job out of it. So, so I never really went out to do to do a broader search. Interesting. So how did you know this person is just a friend of yours from school, from just uh, growing up or? No, from uh, just being in the same city and, um, you know, going out and meeting friends of friends that are doing other things in the, in the same community. Um, important lesson. You know, just social group kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's an important lesson, right? <laughs> um, so you're so you're kind of doing these interviews. What was it? Was it uh, pretty easy? Was it was it technical? I mean, they know you're coming from a consulting background, so I assume they didn't grill you on like accounting questions, but maybe they did. I don't know. What was that like? Um, it was it was entirely new for both of us. Um, I mean, I, I basically told them like, look, I mean, if, if you want to grill me on on technicals, um, I mean, I, I'm not going to be your guy. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't. This is specifically why I'm interested in doing this, mm -hmm. and the reason it might make sense for you is I have this other skill set that you think you might be interested in, um, and so if like if that's interesting to you, if that's an interesting trade, then then really we should talk about um, you know overall fit, mm -hmm. and and they were like, yeah, that yeah. actually makes sense. <laughs> so, so and then uh, it was, so it was a very unique uh, interview process. So it's interesting to me that they kind of were, were frustrated with the finance accounting majors right out of school. It, it, I think probably some of it had to do with them getting people straight out of undergrad and they probably wanted somebody more seasoned or a little more senior. Is that, do you feel like that's accurate? It wasn't just the consulting thing. So you, you get in there. Do you feel like, again, it's just a super steep learning curve? Um, Entirely. Or, yeah. <laughs> I assume it was, it was really super, hard. super rocky the first six months again. Yeah, I mean, I think there was a um, there was a disconnect, and and actually, I've seen this this everywhere. Um, you know, people get to know what their roles are and what their business does, and and they get so used to some you know some of its terminology, some of its concepts. They get so used to it that they just kind of assume that everyone else in the world knows what their business does. Mm -hmm. um, and and actually, that's been really good for me. Um, in in trying to uh, to talk to people who do who work in a lot of different businesses, because I can kind of pick up on whether or not they're they're used to the explain like I'm five concept, yep. or whether they go straight into 
you know, they're you know, dropping acronyms and they're talking about uh, different processes that they may think are universal, but really is unique either to their industry or their company. That's fair. And, and it lets me like, it lets me pivot really quickly to be able to meet them wherever they are or mm-hmm. to, for me to say, Hey, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit lost. Like, let's go back to this point. Can you explain this to me in a way that doesn't like, you know, make them feel like they've totally overshot the mark. Got it. And so when you started there, what was the hardest thing? Just the financial model, the, the financial modeling, the Excel work for you, I assume. Oh yeah. The, uh, or the, the hours idea of Excel without a mouse. Yeah. Yeah. Don't I mean, use your mouse. It, don't use your mouse. <laughs> in uh, Excel. It, I mean, it's, it's incredibly valuable to be able to use Excel without your mouse. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, I mean, it's like playing an instrument. I mean, it's like you're telling somebody, Hey, if you want to be a part of this orchestra, you have to be able to play this instrument. And they're like, well, I don't play the flute. And you're like, I know you don't play the flute. You're going to learn to play the flute. <laughs> it's a whole sequence of you know, training your brain to be able to, to use something in order to accomplish a task quicker and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with greater accuracy than you could do another way. And, but it's like, it's hard. It takes some time. So were they patient with you, with you or were there, so did you feel like you were going to get fired at some point or were they patient? I, I kind of felt like I was going to get fired like every week. Yeah. I can't imagine. That must have been <laughs> it was, stressful. It was a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> so were they supportive when you were applying to business school? They're like, yeah, please get out of here. <laughs> or were they, no. uh, or were they kind of, they understood, or you came along by that, by your second year, you were starting to be useful again. No, it was it was weird in that uh, like there were some things uh, that I I could help with. Uh, a lot of it was context for a lot of it was context for buyers, honestly, mm-hmm. because we were going out and trying to figure out. Yeah, you know, we had we had a sell side assignment. Uh, we were looking to see you know who who are the right buyers to talk to here and why. Mm-hmm. Um, I I could come up with some very detailed um, and applicable. Um, buyer theses essentially of like okay yeah. well if I was this buyer what would I think about this asset so you're doing um, more of the associate really deep level that... thinking rather than you know but the problem is you were an analyst and so you still had to do some of the modeling <laughs> and, and that was really the challenge that there's this, this disconnect of there were some things that I was associate level on mm-hmm. um, while other things that I was like intern level on right um, and and so kind of you know, using that skill set while being able to like help me get up the learning curve on the stuff that I wasn't good on. Mm-hmm. I mean, we finally, it, it took some time to figure out how I could help mm-hmm. um, and, you know, what the, what the right way to, you know, sort of what my position was. Um, yeah. And, and when that happened, actually it was, um, I think it was pretty productive. Then I wasn't worried about being fired anymore. <laughs> how long did that take before you feel like you were hitting your stride? Um, probably another six months. It's so almost a year, and yeah, yeah. And so you're there for another year, and so you're probably very productive that second year. Tell me a little bit about why business school. What was your thought process? Because you had said um, you were so- interested in private equity. I assume at this point you knew that if you went to business school without private pre MBA private equity experience, your odds of breaking into private equity were incredibly slim. Or you did yeah. not know that. Um, and- and I had people, um, I actually had one guy um, who I, I told him that's what I was interested in, and he laughed me out of his office. And he had, I mean, he had taken a meeting with me. He's a, a friend of one of the partners at my firm. Mm-hmm. And so he'd taken a meeting with me as a favor. And I said, look, this is, you know, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, and I mean, I knew they hired um associates at, at their firm and I was trying to figure out you know, how you know how does one get into um into that hiring pool how does how does one break into that and he was basically like I, I can't believe I'm wasting my time on this like you're so far away from any path that would get you to like what our firm does and the fact sorry that can you speak up like, a little can you, sp- out yet? you you kind of feel like a little further away now I don't know oh yeah there you go um, that's better so the um, the conversation with this guy basically was that um, the fact that you are here in my office telling me you're interested in private equity uh, makes me think that you're delusional. 
and so I'm wasting my time because this is like this is ridiculous. This is like a guy playing JV baseball in high school saying you know he, he wants to figure out how to you know get himself ready for the draft. <laughs> it's like, like what are you doing? So what that didn't discourage you or tell me this was this guy was he in PE? Yeah, he was. He was he, a partner at a private equity firm. Um, kind of near the near the bank you were working at or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got same it. Town. Got it. So, was that discouraging? What was your thought process? Had you already been accepted to business <laughs> school? I mean, what what was your thought? Okay, maybe I need to rethink this, or what was the thought process there? Um, it, it was very discouraging. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it was. Um, I had already been accepted to school. Um, it was not a school that he thought was good enough that would afford me any opportunities for private equity recruiting. Um, and so, I mean, I, I wasn't rethinking like what school to go to, but I was rethinking like, you know, do I do another uh, investment banking stint after after business school? Do I want to, you know, are there other alternative pathways or skill development that I can get that you know, as a, as a possible, you know, side door or back door in. Mm-hmm. And so what, what did you come up with? Or did you just go to school and just thinking, I'm going to try my best and recruit for both? Um, or? Yeah, went to school. Um, kind of thought, you know, I'll, I'll try and figure out how to um, position myself to. Because I got to say, man, there's a lot of people with this exact kind of path or what I would call delusion of, hey, I'm in, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm in consulting, I'm going to go to banking, and then, oh, I'm going to go to an MBA and go into private equity. Well, no, it doesn't work that way. The problem is you have so many pre-MBA associates that are already that already have that private equity experience before you get to business school that are fighting for a limited number of seats post-MBA. So to come into M- your MBA and say, you know, I have no private equity experience, I have banking experience, but I'm going to get into private, one of those post-MBA seats is incredibly, di- it is incredibly difficult to do um, unless you're just like a really good networker or you're going to somewhere that's a little more open to taking somebody that's that doesn't have that experience but so tell me about so you get you get onto campus mm-hmm. it doesn't sound like you were deterred but maybe you were just a little bit more wary of like this may not happen so were you recruiting for mm-hmm. banking consulting what were you recruiting for in that first kind of um, I was I was recruiting for consulting okay um, and and I was recruiting for consulting because I thought of my of my experiences that had been the stronger one, mm-hmm. um, and it was more likely that I could get into a place where uh, I was doing more of what I had been doing uh, earlier on, and maybe that was a way to, to kind of side door my way in. Interesting. But side door um, your way into so, PE. So you mean? What's that? Side side door your way into private equity, meaning if you went to consulting. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Um, and I mean, uh, so I did, I went to, um, I went to a consulting firm for my business school internship. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, uh, and, and they've had people make that jump. Um, okay. it's not common, but, uh, they at least had a, a history of people doing it that, that got me comfortable that, that it was at least possible. Yeah. It's a strong firm, but yeah. Um, okay. And, and in the, in the meantime, so uh, again, um, I'll, I'll kind of outline just how lucky I got. Uh, so there was a, a private equity firm uh, not that far from where my business school was mm-hmm. uh, that was uh, that was nascent. I mean, they were raising their first fund, so a lot of you know early fund one risk. Mm-hmm. Um, they they were trying to figure out how to how to staff up, um, but I mean they they weren't really in the market for uh, more seasoned. Um, or more premium post MBA private equity recruiting, mm-hmm. um, you know, because of their their size and uh, you know that risk level. What was that first fund like? A um, hundred million under two hundred million? No, it was a it was a couple hundred million. Yeah, so it's were they thinking one higher, maybe, you know, one associate higher? Was that their yeah plan? One yeah. one or two. Yep. Um, and and it happened. They were um, they were focused on an industry. It actually lined up really well all the way back from what my engineering experience had been in mm-hmm. undergrad. Got it. Okay. Um, and uh, 
one of the partners had come up through more of a consulting background, uh, and he worked at, uh, or had worked earlier in his career at the consulting firm that I uh, interned at. Ah, so you have a couple of nice little check marks next to your next to your application because you have a similar background to him. So and, and so, what we ended up doing. Well, how did you were, first like, off? How did you even find this place? How did you even know to to talk to them? Was it through just a business school? They came on campus, alum. What was? How did that work? No, they. Um, I, I was I was looking for uh, private equity firms near me. Okay. Uh, where I could basically go and work for free. Okay. I was trying to figure out, okay, where's within, you know, some kind of driving distance that maybe I can convince somebody that I can do something useful for them. Wait, so you're saying you're saying you had this top summer internship at a top consulting firm, your summer associate, um, you, you know, your summer in between your two years at um, your MBA. And then you graduated without a job and you started just going around saying, I'll work for free at these PE funds? No, this was during my second year of school. Okay, so you wanted to do an internship during your second year to try and help yourself kind of transition into full-time. Did you receive a full-time offer from the consulting firm? I did. Okay, and so then And you... so I, I looked at that kind of as option value. That, you know, I have uh, a couple of free months uh, where I can see what else I can find. And they didn't put and pressure on you to accept? If that doesn't work out. They didn't put pressure on um, you? Not really. I mean, it... Uh, um, you had a couple months. You felt like to. I had a couple of months. Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised that didn't that you had that long. But okay. So, um, mm -hmm. you just expressed them. Yeah, it's really interesting. I'm just thinking, give, thinking it over, kind of thing. Or how did you communicate back to them? Thank you so much. It was a great summer. Pretty much. Um, that it was. Um, it was a great summer. I, I really liked my experience, mm -hmm. which was true. I mean, it was a great experience. Yeah. Um and. And I was, you know, going to take a little bit of time to make sure that, you know, I wanted to come work there if it was, you know, what I I could really commit to for a couple of years, you know, instead of using it as, uh, you know, some jump off point or, you know, try and um, you know, figure out what else, what other offers I could negotiate against. Great. So you had this um, in your back pocket. And, you had this offer, so you were set. Mm -hmm. Kind of going into your second year, where yep. you thought, hey, let me see if I can get some private equity experience on the resume, I'll work for free while doing class if it's close enough, right? That's the thought process. Yep. So you start, how are you doing the search? LinkedIn or what are you, how are you doing this? The WSO company database? Uh, <laughs> I mean, good old Google. Google, okay, cool. And so you, you come across this kind of nascent fund that is uh, in the process of fundraising or they had just closed? No, in the middle of fundraising. Okay. And how do you approach them? Do you find this guy somehow? Um, how do you, do you reach out over LinkedIn? How do you get the email? Um, he, his email was on the website. Okay. And <laughs> yeah, tell me incredible. what you, tell me what you wrote on that. Tell me what you wrote on that email. Um, I, I told him that I was a, a business school student that I had, I mean, kind of similar to my previous email outreach. I had a couple of things that I thought could be, you know, good fits for them specifically. Like I, I structured it as, you know, what are the problems that I can solve for you? So I, I wasn't looking for a favor. Right. I was saying, look, I think I think I can help you do these things. Um, and it's it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty low cost uh, option for you to to be able to have some extra help. So, you know, maybe this will work. And you said for free, basically. I'll work for free. Um, I, I think it was, uh, I don't know. I think I worked for minimum wage. Got it. So you, you did you say that in the initial email or how was that kind of communicated such that it didn't look desperate, but it still was like, hey, it's a great option? No, I just I just told him I didn't say anything about about comp. I just said, you know, this is this is what I'm in, interested in doing. Um, you know, maybe we can um, you know, maybe we can figure out a way to um, to, you know, sit down and talk about this. And, you know, I just I kind of left all the 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 comp discussion is so is okay. ambiguous. So he reached he obviously reached out, but when did he when did you guys talk? Tell me about that first meeting. Um I don't sat down at a coffee shop like mm -hmm. a week later. Yeah. And he was like, Yeah, that actually sounds great. You seem like a 
a regular normal person and I can like I can read your resume that's I mean we can totally use someone like this so you know no promises like I'm not promising that this turns into a job so uh yeah let's let's give it a shot you know let's do like you know 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week or something like that and I said okay sure done so you're getting some of that PE experience and then as graduations approaching tell me about that what's the thought process going on are you still getting paid very little um, um for so this work? Yeah. rewind a little ways sure um so i did this i i did this for like um i don't know two months three months maybe mm -hmm. and they pulled me in a conference room and asked if i wanted a full-time job and you of course said absolutely <laughs> i said that <laughs> sounds great <laughs> Okay, so uh, you're very far away from from home at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Did anything go through your mind of like this is not really where I want to be? Was there any kind of concern they hadn't closed their first fund, or it was just like, hey, this is I'm going to learn here? Was that the thought? Um, tons of concern. Yeah. Um, and 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 really, the the thought was, um, I mean, I I know that I want to be in an investing role. I mean, that's, I had a lot of conviction around that as a career goal. Right. Um, so from, uh, from the standpoint of, you know, am I, am I making some steps to accomplish that? Um, I thought the worst thing that could happen here is that, you know, it, it didn't work out and uh, I could probably find another similar role and kind of, you know, repeat a year or two. Mm -hmm. um, or I could, I didn't feel like it was closing a lot of doors. I mean, it was definitely closing a door on the on the consulting opportunity right. uh, out of business school. Right. And I mean, that's that's not nothing. I mean, that was a really good opportunity. Right. With, um, with I assume let's let's talk but, about pay. Let's talk about pay a little bit because um, you know from undergrad through to your analyst IB years to what you would have been seeing at the top consulting firm at a business school to to this role where I assume mm -hmm. it was a pay cut. But tell me a little bit about that. Can you, you can give me ranges? It doesn't have to be exact. Can you just share with the listeners? Um, so what I can say is it wasn't actually a pay cut. Oh, great. Okay. So, so I mean, that made it easier. <laughs> that does make it easier. So, so, but just real quick. I, I would have been willing to take a pay cut. <laughs> If they if they had just offered you less, um. So the consulting role right at an undergrad in the financial crisis, I assume that was like forty fifty thousand dollars a year base, something like that, or was it a little bit better? Um, no, it was more than that. It okay. Was, um, it was like fifty five mm -hmm. base, I yep. think. Okay. Um, and then we had a kind of a, a bonus profit share, so it was. It was like 75 or 80. All oh, in. not bad. Not really good right out of school during that time. Um, I was pretty excited. Yeah, that's awesome. And then so banking, uh, when you made that jump um, to the investment bank, was it similar comp or did it bump a little bit all in? Uh, no, it was it was about the same. About the same, um, even with bonus, yeah, just because it was, it was a smaller. Yeah, bonus smaller. included. Okay. Was, I mean, this is a boutique firm and a... Um, you know, yep. in the Western United States. Fair enough, fair enough. And then so um, for the top consulting firm out of business school, it would have been, I'm guessing, like 130 to 150 all in or more? Uh, probably a little more than that. Okay, um, so closer to 200. So base, uh, I'm trying to remember, base was uh, 125 or 130, mm -hmm. I think. Got and it. Same thing. There was some bonus and profit sharing and 401k matching. and Okay. Um, and then there was, uh, and I think this is pretty common for the, the larger consulting firms. There's some tuition reimbursement that is really structured as a signing bonus. Got it. Um, and some other some other goodies that take it to <laughs> closer yeah, to 200. I don't know, maybe 180, 190. Yeah. Win. Got it. Okay, fair enough. And so when you were accepting this job, were you communicating and negotiating that, like letting them know all the things you would have gotten at this other consulting firm to help kind of bump it, or were they very no. were they just <laughs> <laughs> so they were just generous up front because they liked your work that you had been putting in, you think? Um, I mean, I think they were trying to, um, honestly, part of it, I think, was a, um, like, how do we want to run our firm kind of thing for them? Mm -hmm. Like, they they wanted to, um, you know, get, get people that uh, were, you know, of a talent level that, you know, this is, this is the kind of comp that they would expect. 
Yeah. Um, and so they're, they're really laying some groundwork for, for future hires in the future. Did you mind sharing um, what that, that was? It was around the same as, as the consulting comp? Uh, so uh, base comp was about the same, uh, but bonus was higher. I mean, that's impressive for a new um, fund at that level. I got to say, that's like, that's very generous. Well, I guess it's post yeah, MBA. I mean, well, it's we post, no, it's fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. It's fair enough. It's post MBA. So I guess it's, that's actually not that, that unheard of. So that's, that makes sense. And was there any carry involved? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Uh, a couple okay. of points. Got it. Okay. And um, so that made it easy for you. That just, that was like, okay, this is, I'm not taking a hair, I'm not taking a cutting comp. This is where I want to be. I'm on the investing side. I'm on the buy side. Finally, I made it. That guy was wrong. <laughs> that told you you're <laughs> delusional, <laughs> right? You get a, you get another I big. I, I did. I was I was floating for uh, yeah. know, a month or two. That's and, awesome. I mean, I didn't I didn't send any. I told you so emails, which is good because that's bad form. That is bad form, but great to see um, that you made it. And so, was the fun? When did the fun close? Like soon um, soon after you started. Another. I don't know, six months later or so. Okay, so were you doing a lot of like actual looking for the first deal prior to the fund close? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there was uh, there was some capital that was available. Mm -hmm. uh, There's kind of a, a first close from a from an anchor investor. Yeah. Um, and so we so we had we had dry powder. I mean, we had an ability to to close to go out and yep. and do a deal or two. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was a hundred percent my time. It was, it was trying to find, um, what those opportunities would be. And then, you know, trying to, trying to have some evaluation of whether or not it made sense for us. And did you get any of those deals done or no? Uh, we got one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, it probably went down the road, uh, a significant ways on maybe three or four others. Yep. Um, I think that's the that was one of the things that was most surprising to me about mm -hmm. private equity, at least how how our firm did it, was that um, I, I kind of imagined that it was a little bit more of a machine. Like opportunity comes in, um, you spend you know two or three weeks on a sprint figuring <laughs> out if if it pencils, you know, if it yeah. if it looks like a, a good deal, and then if it is, cool, you know, you put your uh, you put in your your indication and and then you're you're sprinting tell me reality um, what was reality reality was so much messier um i'm trying to figure out uh well this deal uh is proprietary so it's not in a process so it's like we're going to sprint on it for three weeks and then hit the pause button and then six weeks later it's time to sprint on it again because they change their minds they think they want to sell and then we sprint on it and then no, they're it's hot and cold and it's hot and cold. Yeah. Um, or if a partner really loves the deal and every other partner is like, well, we'll never do that deal because it's not in our scope of what we're supposed to be investing in. Right. And he's like, yeah, but I, I really like it. And I think it's a deal that we can do. Mm -hmm. And so you do like, as an associate, you, you do like six weeks of work on it and you bring it to well, not a final IC, but like an interim investment committee and everyone else is like, yeah, just like we told you, this was a giant waste of time. And yeah. Just like, oh man, like, that's crushing. Yeah. Yep. 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 Fair enough. Um, so why leave? Um, another opportunity that was closer to family. Okay. Um, and offered me a little bit more latitude to work on what I wanted to work on. Um, tell me about you know, that. There's, there's, yeah, so there's, I think there's a point where everyone gets to where you feel like you're far enough, uh, you're far far enough along the learning curve that that you want to spend time on the projects or the opportunities that uh, that you think are the most promising. Um, and you know, when someone says, "Hey, this is a deal that I want to do," um, convince me that this is a good deal. And you don't believe in it. Mm. Um, that's, I mean, that's hard after time. And doesn't mean it's a bad investment. Doesn't mean they're not going to be successful. Doesn't. I mean, it's not at all a you know a referendum on on their firm's success. It's just you know how you have some options. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a lot of places that you can go work. So how do you want to spend your time in a way that you know you enjoy and find valuable? And so you felt like this new opportunity gave you more of the decision making of the of bringing deals and 
you know, it was obviously a title promotion. So, you know, called vice president, um, you know, mm-hmm. now. So you're able to kind of bring those deals. Are you still feel like, do you have enough latitude now to, to do kind of the deals that, that interest you? Um, a lot more. And there's, there's a runway to, um, to be partner um, or MD, you know, a self, a self-contained uh, unit, you know, at the, at the, at the other opportunity. Um, I mean, regardless of where you start out, I mean, you're, you're going to put in some time and, and you have to get to a place where, uh, where you can, you, ha- you have enough experience to be able to have mm-hmm. you know, a partner role. Yeah. And and the 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 comp was great. The um, you know the people were great. Um, there was a lot of things that I liked about the other role, but I, I didn't see myself as a as a partner. I mean, I yep. just didn't feel like I, I fit in with the overall strategy. How much of that was location um, and culture? Um, not that much. Not that honestly. Much. Okay. Um, Fair. Yeah, I mean, there's some perks about you know being able to be closer to family. Yeah. Um, and, but I mean, there's, I, I've, I've lived a lot of places, <laughs> like a lot of places <laughs> I've lived, uh, in the Pacific Northwest. I've lived in California. I've lived in the Midwest. I've lived in the Northeast. I've lived in the Southeast. <laughs> I haven't lived internationally. So, I mean, that's a, yeah. um, that's one place I haven't, I haven't gotten yet, but, yeah. um, there are, there are great things and kind of frustrating things about everywhere. Yeah. And if you meet people who are billionaires, um, and have the means to live literally wherever they want. Mm-hmm. They don't pick one place. Yeah. They live in a bunch of places. <laughs> and Fair. so, like, it's just there's no place that's perfect, but mm-hmm. there's cool things about every place. Yeah. Fair enough. So tell me, like, uh, the I think it'd be helpful to listeners to hear a little bit about your current role because we you kind of sometimes people call it a merchant bank. Is that fair? Yeah. I think merchant banking, you explain what yeah, that means so, and, and what your kind of role is now, because it is kind of a blend of, of investing and advisory, correct? It is. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think the, so the term merchant bank is, is a really old term. Um, and really the, probably the best example of it was, you know, what Goldman Sachs did, um, you know, in the early part of the 20th century, where what they, what they were was a one-stop shop for, advice for their clients Mm -hmm. and so maybe the client has a problem you know they need liquidity um and what the what the right answer is is a is a recap well okay we can we can do that we can do a debt recap Mm -hmm. um maybe they maybe it's time for them to retire they want to sell their business okay we can do that i mean Mm -hmm. we can run a sell side transaction right maybe they don't really need uh they don't really want to retire um, they just need some fresh equity to help them, you know, mm-hmm. build out a new facility or a new warehouse that's going to, you know, change the profitability of the company. Yeah. And so it's maybe some structured equity or growth equity. Well, yeah, we can do that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's from someone else, uh, but we have some of our own capital that we can use to, uh, to place alongside these people that we advise for, you know, five, 10 years at a time. Got it. And so it's an investment. Sure. Um, so that's kind of where the, the private equity comes into play. Yeah. Um, but really on the surface, you're, you're a long-term advisor to these businesses. Do you feel like a lot of your work has shifted back to the advisory side or is it truly like you're looking at these deals with a true kind of, uh, investor mindset? Um, you kind of switch back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the fun thing for us is, um, I mean, I, I don't necessarily get paid on uh, like, like we don't get a transaction um, bonus internally. So like, you know, completing a deal isn't, isn't the goal. The goal right. is to provide really good long-term advice for our clients. Mm-hmm. And so if, if they're happy with us and they continue to see us as a valuable partner and that, um, and that continues to, to create fees for us, mm-hmm. that's how we get paid. Got it. And so it's it's a little more of I have a bunch of levers and a bunch of tools at my disposal to uh, to help them be successful, and I can kind of pick and choose. And that actually is that's uh, that's uh, relieving. Uh, you you can always do what you think is truthful and good for the client. You don't have to worry about you know am I 
am I trying to make sure this is a good opportunity for me or you know, how do I structure this in a way that right. maybe it's the right thing for them to do, but it's going to get them paid. Like we, we just don't have to worry about that. That's great. And so tell me a little bit, it's kind of almost like a, it's almost like it's a bulge bracket where you have the, you have the balance sheet to help it at a smaller scale, mm -hmm. right? For the for yes. middle market. Yep. That makes sense. So tell me a little bit about, um, kind of what's next for you. What's the plan? It sounds like you're, you're, you're planning to stay firm for, for a while, maybe get up to MD or, or partner and long-term what's, what's in, what's in store. Yeah, I think uh, kind of continuing to, to grow in this particular role. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, uh, I've, you know, as we've talked about, uh, I've had a lot of different roles. Mm -hmm. um, they've covered a lot of different, you know, type, you know, parts of the, of the Wall Street Oasis spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've never gotten into sales and trading. Maybe that's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, you got to be I able think, to comment know, on every single forum, man. Come on, <laughs> every yeah, sub forum. It's, it's, uh, I don't know if that's in my future. Yeah. Um, but the, I, what, what has turned out to be really important to me, like I, I think you'll find this, uh, you know, across a, a lot of the, uh, the longer term users on the forum is figuring out, you know, what is it, what is it that gets them up in the morning? What is it that they like to do? You know, what gives them maybe the excitement is, um, you know, making an investment that they think is going to make a lot of money. You know, maybe it's, they like they're deal junkies and they just like the excitement of being in a live deal. You know, mm -hmm. maybe it's, they like to provide good advice, you know, there's, but, and that's individual. Yeah. Um, it, it is, it's different for everyone. What, um, what works for them. And this is, uh, this is a role where, where I feel like that's, um, that works for me. Um, the things that uh, make us be successful um, are things that I like doing. And, and that's, that's, that's kind of what everyone's great alignment. looking to find. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So that's, tell me, that's any, what I'm hoping to stick with. And any advice for your younger self that you would give before we call it? If you could go um, back, anything you would change? I, uh, I was always really quick to assume I knew what the, what the next right answer was. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't spend as much time being curious and just asking questions uh, that I probably should have. I mean, I probably would have benefited from a little bit more data gathering from, you know, taking meetings with people that I thought were not going to be beneficial or, you know, spending some time to, to learn about things that, well, well, that's not, that's not what I want to do. You know, why would I spend any time learning about that? Um, that? That probably, I think that would have helped me get, you know, to where I wanted to end up a little sooner. It's a little more open-minded about overall, the type of people, I mean, yeah, you're you're meeting with. Yeah, like open-minded, definitely. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like I mean, I can look back at where I've ended up from where I started, and I mean, it's hard to be disappointed about any of it. I mean, it's a it's been no, a pretty it's, cool ride. It's so been far. a it's been a great ride. It's a uh, super successful. So, and thanks again for all of the incredible, helpful advice you've given over the years to the the Deviso monkeys and. Um, I know I really appreciate it. Um, I think you have some of the most silver bananas on the entire community. So, <laughs> for for a reason, because you're you're very giving of your time and, and your advice. So I appreciate that. Yeah, more than happy to help. Um, I've been a, a little quieter recently, just because you know it's you're been busy. A busy time at the office. But, yeah, no, you know, that happens. <laughs> it happens. Well, hopefully we can have you uh, keep coming back for years to come. Thank you so much for your time. And thanks to you, my listeners at Wall Street Oasis. If you have any suggestions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to send them my way, patrick at wallstreetoasis.com. Until next time.